Chair. Um, and congratulations, Senator Fifield, on taking on the arts portfolio. I think a sigh of relief went through the arts community on your ascension. So congratulations. Um, maybe let's just cut straight to the chase. Do you, uh, recognising you've only been in the portfolio for a fairly short time, you're probably still getting your bearings. Have you had time to review any of the evidence presented yourself, uh, either to the Minister's <coughs> call for submissions on the draft MPA guidelines or the more than 2,000 submissions received by the Senate inquiry? Uh, I, I've had, uh, I've had a, a, flick, uh, a flick through some of the submissions, but uh, right. I, I wouldn't claim to have uh, gone through them all in detail. Uh, I've been at this for months and I haven't been able to get through all of them. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of material there. Um, I trust, though, that you have had time to get a sense of the view of the art sector. <coughs> how, would, how would you characterise the tone or the, or the mood of the submissions that you have had time to take a look at? Well, I, I guess something I'm always wary of is uh, necessarily equating the, the volume of submissions to an inquiry uh, as, a, as an indicator of where the balance uh, of opinion lies on a, on a particular issue. That, that's not to say that volume, volumes of submissions shouldn't be um, uh, something that, that is looked at, but I, I don't <laughs> necessarily equate that uh, with where the, the balance of, uh, of views are. Um, and I guess by making that point, I just indicate that there, there are a range of views uh, in the arts community. Uh, but obviously, uh, I, I recognise that uh, there are uh, some uh, extremely strong views uh, about uh, the, uh, the program for excellence. There are. How many submissions have you come across that actually thought that this NPEA, the National Program for Excellence in the Arts, was a good idea? How many submissions have you seen that actually support it? Have Look, I, I, I haven't tallied them up. Um, what I get, where, where I've gained uh, my appreciation of the fact that there are a range of views is, is from, from discussions with different, uh, different people in the sector. I'm not sure there are a range of views. I haven't yet come across anybody apart from Senator George Brandis who thought it was a good idea to carve out more than $100 million from the Australia Council. So could I at least, I'm not trying to get off on the wrong foot here, because no. it is early days, could I at least get a concession from you that the view of the art sector is overwhelmingly against this proposal? Um, look, I, I, I'll, 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 I'll leave it to, uh, I'll leave it to uh, other people to categorise uh, where the balance of, of opinion is, but I do recognise that there are some very strong views. All right. You... Um, <clears throat> Okay. Um, you've got something of a... This thing's been handed to you. It wasn't your call. It was a decision of the previous minister. But nonetheless, many in the sector, and myself, I, would, I guess I would include in that, thought the fact that the portfolio was transferred to a fresh pair of hands is a positive sign that there would be a bit of room to move. Do you actually intend to go through with the establishment of the NPEA? Uh, as I've... As I've indicated, um, I'm someone who, who likes to uh, form my own view uh, about arrangements in my portfolio. Um, it, you shouldn't read anything in, into that um, other than uh, as a minister who's come into the portfolio, uh, I like to uh, sit down, I like to talk to stakeholders, um, I like to uh, look at uh, the arrangements in the portfolio uh, and uh, form, form my own view. Um, okay. as to uh, uh, the, uh, the efficacy. Uh, so, so that's what I'm doing. Um, and uh, as I say, uh, I hope uh, in, uh, uh, in a matter of weeks uh, to uh, better give some certainty to the sector. OK, I think there are a lot of people out there who would appreciate that. The Prime Minister has indicated he wants to be more consultative, certainly more than a unilateral <coughs> decision uh, halfway through halfway through budget day or in the latter stage of budget day that this money was going to be ripped out of OSCO. You've also, I think, indicated on your own behalf that you intend to be more consultative. Mm. The sense of urgency that myself, probably Senator Billick and other senators here are bringing to the debate is that people are losing their jobs right now mm. as a result of this decision. So um, I'd also put in a, a good word for the feral arts people. I've just been given a copy of their tabled correspondence. They made very thoughtful submissions to the inquiry. So. If you have time in your, in your busy diary, 
uh, to meet with them, I think you'd find it very worthwhile. Sure. There, there, there's certainly no, no lack of, uh, of willingness to, uh, uh, to uh, catch up. Okay. Um, I'd like to clarify, if I can, I don't know whether this is going to be most useful for you to take on or the officers from the department. Last Senate estimates, in his last estimates, I guess, as Arts Minister, Senator Brandis um, provided us with the following statement. I'll, this is fairly brief. I'm just going to read it in full. He said, the major performing arts companies are the heart and soul of the performing arts sector in this country. They are big employers of artists and workers. They are the people who undertake most of the touring, including the regional touring as well as the international touring. They are the people who provide the performances that the great audience of Australia enjoy. Uh, that argument that it was actually the majors that were providing the value in the audience reach and then that kind of market share, if you want to put it that way, was one of his key reasons for establishing the national program in the first place and quarantining that money away from the small and medium um, uh, companies. Now, data from the Australia Council itself proves that that statement is false and uh, that, in fact, it's the small to medium organisations that employ the much larger fraction of, of workers. They have much larger international audiences and in Australia they have double the audience numbers of major organisations. Now, it's obviously, I'm not trying to push the, the argument too far to the other side. Everybody appreciates the existence and the role of the major organisations. <coughs> but the, the, the small companies and the medium companies that have been hit the hardest by the NPEA have less funding and a significantly higher impact. They're actually nine times for, for every dollar of, of taxpayers' money spent. They have nine times the reach. Um, would you care to reflect on that? Are these numbers new to you? Did you? realise that Senator Brandis had either intentionally or unintentionally misled the Estimates Committee from last time? Were you aware of that? Yeah, look, I, I, I haven't looked at the full context of, uh, of Senator Brandis's uh, comments uh, at that Estimates, uh, but I have a strong appreciation for uh, the contribution <coughs> that, that all, all elements make. Um, mm -hmm. Major performing arts companies, uh, small and, and medium companies, uh, but I recognise that. This is work that Ben Eltham has put together um, for Crikey and a couple of other publications. So I just wonder, I can table it if you would like, but I would certainly bring it to your attention that the former Arts Minister who used that as his premier justification for tape making this move appears to have based it on, on flawed, flawed assumptions. So if I, I well, can, yep. well, I'll just obviously leave that feel, there. Feel, feel free to provide uh, All right. the material you have. I'll do that, Senator Firefield, thank you. Um, who have you had time to meet with thus far um, since the portfolio changeover? Oh, look, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 take that, uh, I'll take that on notice. Uh, there's, uh, uh, there's, there's many uh, that, I've, that I've caught up with, um, but uh, I think ra rather than give um, uh, an, an incomplete uh, account, I'll take that on notice. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, Rather than taking it from me, have you met anybody yet um, within the sector who's provided you with evidence more directly than anecdotes that I might provide you that uh, there are companies laying people off at the moment from the small to medium end as a result of, of these changes? Have you come across any evidence of that? Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take that on notice. Um, uh, it, 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 it may well be the case that uh, there's, there's been correspondence to me uh, yeah. to that effect, uh, but in terms of face-to-face uh, uh, -face conversations, uh, uh, I, I, I guess uh, the way it's been presented is it, that it's uh, something that is in contemplation for, for some organisations. It is. It's in contemplation. <coughs> for some, it's, it's an immediate uh, proposition. For some, the, the point of no return has already passed and people have been laid off. I guess, as I say, that's why we're bringing something of a, of a degree of urgency to this conversation. I wonder whether you would consider um, providing emergency relief and transition funds to the Australia Council in the interim while you work out what kind of direction you want to set, and I respect that that's going to take a small amount of time. Uh, are you in a position to provide emergency relief while the arts sector that had just bettered down a six-year funding arrangement with the Australia Council before Senator Brandis wrecked it now they're in limbo again. What's your view on, on some kind of emergency relief package just to at least prevent um, closures of companies and job losses? Well, I, I, I guess if I, if I can make the point that um, uh, the, uh, 
the, the situation of individual companies uh, is not solely um, or necessarily um, uh, a direct result of decisions that government has made. That there, there's always it, it, it's often an, uh, a challenging environment uh, in the arts. Um, so I just just make that that general point. Um, uh, anything uh, that is done uh, within uh, the arts portfolio, um, however uh, we can figure things, uh, will need to be within uh, the existing funding on the level of the arts. When um, when can we expect the final MPA guidelines? Sorry if you already put this to yeah. Senator Billick. <coughs> um, in um, in a manner uh, in a matter of. Uh, of weeks, of weeks. Um, I'm, I'm looking to provide uh, uh, clarity for the sector. Okay, whether that be final guidelines or you're leaving it open to potentially do something a little bit more dramatic. Uh, I'm there, not trying there, to pin you down. No, 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 <laughs> not, not, not at all, not at all. Uh, what, whatever, what, whatever, whatever um, I, uh, I uh, advise the sector uh, will be uh, in a matter of weeks. Okay. I will leave it there. Thank you, Chair.